Hey, he got the lava lamp going. Oh, goodness. This is an important video. I hope you uh, get something out of it because there'll be something in it for everybody, but it's a simple, straightforward message. I'm all about being rational, logical, sensible. Yeah, never one of those chicken little sort of people at all. Uh, by the way, I love Spyderco knives. It sounds like a commercial. <laughs> it's not, I promise. This one's actually made in Japan. It's called the Salt. It's made uh, with a special type of steel. It's essentially rust proof. Any kind of metal actually can corrode, but I got a link for it below. It's actually uh, serrated. It's made in Japan in Sekai City, which is an ancient uh, city where they made samurai swords. I really love these. I got a couple of these. Actually, sharpening a serrated knife is actually extremely easy. There's probably a thousand videos on YouTube about how to do it. A lot of people worry about sharpening such a knife, but I really love this sucker. I've used it like a gazillion times, and I think I only ever sharpened it like three times over the years. But uh, I was showing this to people on live stream last night because I was asked prior, you know, what my favorite little utilitarian tool is other than like a Swiss Army knife, and that's it. I got a link to that below. This is a video on uh, what's coming. It's like, uh, I like to call this video Planet Conquest Agenda. I like to lay it out for you very, very simply without being overtly complicated. Uh, just keep it really fundamental and uh, make a couple of funny references that I think everybody can relate to. It's like, oh, I saw that. I can get that. Kind of like... Uh, H.G. Wells uh, and the Time Machine reference, for example. Um, before getting into the video, there's actually been a lot that's happening in the past 24 hours. I'd only want to mention that because of what's happened. It's just a very, very short intro before beginning the main video. This is a quote from myself. I'll let you figure this one out. If you can't figure it out, you only have to think about it for three seconds. I say that the year ultimately are three ultimate freedoms. Each one kind of mutually supports the other two, and those are the three L's. Really, there should be a fourth, which should be love, yeah, which really should be added. I posted that, and someone mentioned it should be love, and that's true, really. But uh, land, lead, and language. Language, of course, is the ability to state the truth and not be silenced and say, you know, this is what's going on. And uh, a lot of language, i.e. speech, is uh, curtailed. And uh, the three things that are fundamentally, you know, dropped on people's heads across the world and even here in the United States lately, just like a crushing thing of those three things, which are mutually reinforcing for your own freedom and that of your family, are land, and I'm not, part of this video is about land and actually uh, private uh, dwellings. Lead, I'll let you figure out what that means. It's kind of blatantly obvious. And language, you know, your ability to say, speak the truth and speak your mind without worries. Oh, I better not say that. You know, I could get in trouble. The, the tyranny, by the way, that's gone on in England is so absolutely off the Richter scale. It's mind-blowing. It just, you know, it just, it reminds me when I got food poisoning and you just want to, you know, toss your cookies. It's just so absolutely abysmal. Um, part English, and I'm just so disgusted about what's going on in England and the tyranny there. I know everybody wanted the prior gov out of England, and they got the Keir Starmer guy. It's like, are, are you happy now? Are, are you happy now? <laughs> That's not funny at all, but I mean, I just had to say that. Um, just as a very brief two-minute mention here, Israeli defense officials are warning that the next 12 to 24 hours, their words, not mine, uh, there's been a, a major uh, uh, offensive on uh, Israel uh, from up north and uh, Lebanon and uh, Beirut. General uh, Tomer Bar um, of Israel says that they're on the highest state of readiness. readiness. There's a lot going on on that front. Um, I don't know if you saw the Russian... Uh, a depot where they're storing a lot of their uh, munitions, but I've seen videos from several angles, and it's absolutely, none of this has really made the news. I mean, very little it has, but, the, you know, the, the giant rising sun from uh, the, uh, the drones that were launched into deep in the heart of uh, Russia on that 
that depot, which had God knows how many millions of tons of HE in it. If you don't know what HE is, I don't know where you've been. It's just, the video is just stunning. It's just mind-blowing. And you've seen a lot of stuff cook off and like, wow, that's impressive. And this is like 50 miles back almost. And, you know, it's like a rising sun, except it was a Russian depot for HE and all sorts of, you know, kind of mind-blowing there. I'm surprised none of that's really made it the news. Um, here's the main video, and uh, I'd like to make this uh, super simple. By the way, Keir Starmer, who's a member of the Trilateral Commission and their vision for the future, and what's actually going on. I'm not actually trying to single out that guy who's uh, leading the uh, super evil tyranny that's going on in the UK right now, but I have to tell you that these people absolutely despise you and me right to the core. Um, H.G. Wells in Kissinger and others talked about two different classes of people in the future. I don't know if you've ever seen H.G. Wells' The Time Machine. You probably haven't read it, but you've probably seen the movie adaptation the same. Or in the distant future, you have these childlike Eloy and the, the dark secret is that the Eloy, you know, was the food of uh, these uh, savages that lived underground, uh, the Morlocks. Uh, really what they're trying to do right now, we've been making fun uh, for the past few years where these uh, Hollywood elitists and the rest are talking about eating bugs and how it's so good for you and, you know, uh, helping Mother Earth and the environment. And it's like, you're going to eat bugs. We've been joking about that, but... There is this evolving, and, and it is agenda. I mean, there's a bunch of entities that I shouldn't mention. There's fundamentally five different groups, and uh, they're actually pushing for this. Not literally like the Eloy and the Morlocks, but very, very, very close. Where you have this uh, fundamental uh, uh, shackled and imprisoned class that are uh, feeding the elitists, and they have their own uh, golden calf. I don't know if you've probably everybody seen the Ten Commandments starring Charlton Heston, or you've probably read the Bible. More people have probably seen the Charlton Heston movie than have actually read the Bible. Not that I care about that one way or another, but I mean, that mirrors a lot of things in society where, you know, Moses goes up on the mountain and, uh, you know, they're sick of waiting for him, so they uh, fashion a golden calf, you know, and uh, they melt down the gold and they put the gold on the uh, the wooden uh, calf, so they have a golden calf, and they're worshiping to it, and, you know, sacrificing to it, you know, Moses comes down off the mountain with the Ten Commandments, and, oh, you know, shouts out in his uh, God voice, you know, woe unto you, O Israel, and casts them down, and there is a golden calf, I'd like to talk here in a second, that these groups of people that think they're so much better than you, you know, you're wrecking the environment, and you're, uh, a useless eater while they're jetting around in their aircraft, you know, burning uh, 10,000 pounds of jet fuel every 10 seconds, not literally. And, you know, but you're the one that's, uh, you know, you're the, you're the lowly creature that, uh, you know, needs to, uh, you know, be concerned about the doom of the earth from uh, cow flatulence. And there's something big happened in Indiana and a few other states I'd like to mention here in a second. And it's, you could go look this up. It happened a few days ago. You know, it has to do with the environment. Um, so they are, they are trying to enact this uh, bug-eating class in this league. And you know this. If you don't know this, and you really had your head buried in a dark place. I have to mention that uh, uh, inflation that everybody's concerned about, it's a feature. It's not a bug. If you don't remember anything out of this video, I hope you do remember that, that inflation is planned. It's a feature. It is not a bug or an error or a flaw or a glitch. It is being planned out. And of course, all inflation is caused by printing money from the government. Something that's super serious. And, uh, you know, the, the people will poo-poo this, saying, oh, it's only for the super wealthy making above $100 million a year and, or own oh, $100 million. And it's just not true. They always still, it's only going to affect the top one-tenth of one percent. It's not going to affect you, so don't worry about it. It never, ever turns out that way. Well, people say that about this, about taxing unrealized gains, which is actually coming in the near future. What it means is uh, your investment in your home 
and or your land can be taxed even though you're not selling it. Say, you, know, you bought your home 10 years ago for 100000 Well, now it's worth 300000 right? Right? Well, it's worth 200000 more than... You. They're going to start taxing that. They're also going to increase the shortage. It's going to be a dual front attack by giving out, I think, what is it? Like $25,000 home purchasing credits. Not just to Americans, but also to, to people who are not citizens of this country, for example. And it's true it's going to apply to other countries, but certainly so specifically the United States. And that's actually going to shorten supply and drive up costs. And when they drive up costs, then you have greater value on your house, which means they could tax you more on unrealized gains. I've been talking about this now for years. You get them and I get them all over the place. Phone calls, day and night. You, you block the number, they'll call you from a different number. You block that, they'll call you from another number. They get them, we want to buy your house. All these cards and all these phone calls are ultimately, I'll translate them for you, as I've said before many thousands of times. Are you broke yet? Are you broke? You want to sell your house? Are you broke yet? Are you broke yet? Are you broke yet? Are you broke yet? Hey, we're, we called you last week. Are, are you, uh, are you broke yet? You might say, you can stay there. Hey, you don't have to worry. Uh, there's a commercial all the time. And that company is owned by a company that I've humorously called Darkstone. But the, the true company's name is not Darkstone. You know exactly what I'm referring to. And, you know, they got uh, that Tom Selleck actor. You, know, you can still stay in your own home. All you have to do is just sell it. You can stay there until you kick the bucket. You know, the home won't be yours anymore, but you could still stay there. You're just going to have to start paying rent. So they're going to give you money that they basically got for nothing, which was given to them by the government. So the government gives them money. They use that money to buy your house, and now you are shackled and chained, you know, to something that you're never, ever, ever going to pay off. It's like, whoa, I sold this house for $400,000. I only paid... 80000 for it X number of years ago. So, yeah, but you don't own it now. You're never going to be able to buy another house with it. The money that they gave you is basically worthless. If you stick it in your safe or the bank, it's losing value every day. But now you are a permanent slave. They give you the money for that house, and then you start trickling the money back to them as rent for staying. Well, you could still stay in your house. Let's just buy that house from you. You don't have to move or do anything. But now we own you. This is the unrealized gains trap, and once again, it's a two-pronged attack to destroy you in your home ownership there. Um, the gains on assets uh, held for less than one year are subject to ordinary income tax rates, which will gain on assets held for longer than one year are taxed at a top rate of 23.8%, additionally inheritance, blah, blah, blah. And under the new proposed uh, proposal, they say, well, it's only in effect, you know, the top, top, top class, people with $100 million in assets. And that's just, it's not true. And every time the government says stuff like that, it never, ever, ever pans out that way. It's not going to affect you. It ends up affecting everybody. They did that health care fiasco about 10 years ago. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. If you like your health insurance, you can keep it. And it turns out that was just a total, total, total lie. This is the same type of lie. It's absolutely no difference. All the people, eh, it's not going to affect you. You know, they got $100 million in assets. No, it is going to affect you. Um, it's going to hurt the middle class because it's going to cause an economic calamity. But this is what they want. Just the same way that inflation is a feature, not a bug. Um, a 44, just say 45% tax on capital gains and a 25% tax on unrealized capital gain. In other words, your house that you're living in, which is worth, say, two or three times, four times more than you paid for it, they're going to start taxing you on what its actual sale value is. That is like one of the greatest evils. There's only a few things on Earth that are more evil than the idea of taxing unrealized gains. If you think it's only going to affect the super rich, then you really are really very, 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 very... Your head's in the dark and you're just completely delusional. It's just, you're completely. Um, it would be the absolute end of the middle class. And that's what they want. They want to create two entities. They want to create the Eloy and they're going to be the Morlocks. They're living underground, you know, in their golden chairs. And you're going to be the uh, peasant class eating cockroaches and worried about cow flatulence. 
And I know that's kind of funny, but it's actually extremely close to the truth. Here's what happened, and you go look this up. It sounds so crazy, you're not going to believe me, but you're going to have to look it up, and you're going to see that it's true. Indiana's environmental department urged the residents of Indiana turn off their lights across the entire state to reduce unhealthy levels of ozone. Well, officials in Southern California are warning people to drive extra slow this weekend to limit the amount of dust released in it. This is absolute craziness. They told everybody in Indiana, it's not the only state, I'm not picking on Indiana. You know, you turn the lights down, you turn them off, you know. You sit there in the dark because, you know, <laughs> it's just absolute. This is no different than making people worry about uh, carbon credits and uh, cow flatulence. I guess pretty soon farmers are going to have to buy mandatory government approved and uh, serial numbered um, meters to attach to the dairy airs of their moo cows and it will monitor um, the flatulence that comes out of their moo cows and then you could offset it if you're super rich, which of course no farmer is super rich. You could offset it by buying carbon credits, <laughs> which means like if you want to buy a steak, it'll be like $100. You remember when people... I. I, I was like celebrating my birthday a few weeks ago and I bought like a pack of uh, filet mignons, which I don't ever eat fancy stuff like that. It was like $57 for these, you know, 57 bucks. And that was the discount price at Sam's Club. That 57 is going to go to like 200 Well, Farmer Bob's got to offset the cow flatulence and pay the cow flatulence tax and he passes it on to you, the end user. So now your filet mignons, which you're screeching about them being 60 bucks a pack, 57 bucks. Now they're 200. That, that's what's coming, and that's, of course, not the only thing that's coming. You know, they're going to attack gas stoves and barbecues and heaters and wood stoves and gas-powered lawnmowers. Once again, getting back to, uh, you know, the, the supreme evil that these people truly are. I was talking about, uh, you know, the, the nation who fled from Egypt, you know, as a story. It really is a story. Um, but it's a good story. Um, you know, they, they fashion the golden calf and they start worshiping to it and, you know, making offerings to the calf. Really, really horrible offerings. I'll let you figure that one out. And, you know, Moses comes off the mountain, woe unto you, O Israel. <laughs> he casts down the, you know, the, the earth opens up and basically everybody falls into the, you know, to the fires of doom because they were worshiping the golden calf. The Great Reset and what they're planning, this, you know, this Eloy versus Morlock thing, the Great Reset is to snuff out the useless eaters and usher in, and this is no joke, this is wicked serious. AI is their god, okay? AI is their golden calf. You know, they control it up to a point. <laughs> then you enter in the science fiction movies where AI gets out of control and and, you know, like the Terminator movies, right? But no, I'm serious. All of this stuff, when AI started like slipping into the realm of, wow, that's just, even if you hate AI, started slipping into the realm where it was impressing everybody, because it can, all you have to do is just attach AI to all these robots, and then, well, then you get rid of all the useless eaters, then, hey, you know, we still need a few peasants to collect the food to feed to us, the uh, Morlocks, you know, you peasant little Eloys, you know, get on your farms and, uh, you know, collect the food. You know, we, we still haven't replaced you all yet with robots, and of course the robots are all going to be attached to a collective uh, cloud of AI. And that's not fantastical or science fiction, that's actually real. That is 100% real. And that even means just saying it sounds fantastical, but it is absolutely real. Um, the climax of this AI is their tech god. It is their golden calf of Exodus. It is of these demon elitists, and it's the giant bell gong of, these, of this demon class of depopulationists. Uh, this is absolutely as real as it gets. It sounds so fantastical. It would sound really fantastical like five years ago, but... You really have to have your head rammed in a dark place not to acknowledge the fact that this is true. Uh, I had a favorite uh, science fiction show. It's called Stargate. Yeah, 
Everybody's seen Stargate, I think. There's this uh, group of entities out there in the universe called the Ashen, and uh, they seem so level-headed, and they were technologically very, very advanced. And everybody loved them, like, oh, they're bringing us all this great technology. We can sit back on our butts while robots uh, do all the harvests and everything. And robots basically do everything. Yeah. Oh, the great Ashen, they make life so much easier. But what they do is they go from planet to planet. Every time they find a new planet, they go there. Like, we're going to give you all this great stuff and technology. You're going to live to be 150 years old. <laughs> and, but what they do is they destroy 80% of the people, the useless eaters that live on each one of those planets. And uh, the remaining, uh, actually more than 80%, and destroy them all, you know, just wipe them out. And leave the rest to be bumpkin farmers collecting food. Uh, for the farm, the uh, the fallen demon elitists, the demon elitists, the, the Ashen, they they travel around the planets in these hovering spacecraft, and they make sure everything is one thousand percent under their control. But they offer you this great stuff. Oh, we're gonna live to be two or three times as old as you are now. We got we could cure cancer, this and that, and like, oh, that's wonderful, yay! <laughs> Well, they, they, their plan is to destroy you. That way they own everything, they control everything. This literally is, I'm laughing, but this literally is their plan. And the people actually come up with these things like the Ashen from Stargate. You'll look that up, Ashen, A-S-H-E. You probably see the episode. It's probably free on Amazon to watch. I think it is, actually. Um, also, too, right now, we're suffering from a creeping fungus of stupidity and anti-intellectualism. Man, I see it everywhere. Anti-intellectualism from a class of fools. Uh, people are, unfortunately, and this goes towards helping them and what they want, you know, the demon elitists. Uh, people are intellectually de-evolving. Um, I, I beg you don't get uh, swept up in this gross whirlpool of ignorance. Um, we have a sea of useful idiots cheering on a, a tidal wave of doom uh, that's headed your way. I mean, it sounds like doom and gloomer to say that, but I mean, I really, really do mean that. It is what's coming. There, things aren't getting worse, which it appears, and they are getting worse, actually, but they're really, really getting a lot more obvious. They don't care about you anymore, and they definitely don't care that you know. It's like... They're too far advanced. They know you're, you're not going to stop them. At least they think that anyway. Because you're just utterly unimportant. You're the useless eater that needs to be eating bugs. They just told everybody, it, go look that up. They told everybody in Indiana, oh my God, the ozone, oh no, doom, oh. Turn off all your lights to save the ozone in Indiana. I mean, are you, but people are so dumb. Now, and so anti intel they believe, oh, okay, you're richer and smarter than me, and you're on TV. Oh, of course I'll do what you tell me to do. <laughs> <laughs> you got people that seemingly, of course, they're just puppets, you know. People so incredibly unintelligent, like word salad time. You know, just cackling and say, <laughs> I'll let you guess who that is. Just cackling. <laughs> well, wait, I'm gonna, uh, I worked at McDonald's and I'm going <laughs> to, you know, I care about the people and you're just repeating the same jingoistic nonsense over and over again. And you, you got this uh, swarm of dumb people. Oh, sounds great. <laughs> it's like, wow, you're just ushering in your own, uh, own doom there. Things aren't getting worse. They're just more obvious and they don't care that you know anymore. You know, if you're a smart critter, and I am. Even the people that hate me know I'm smart. And smart isn't important. Being wise is important. You know, I'm not going to fall for that. I'm never going to be party to it. You are the sheep class to them. You know, they want you, they really do want you to eat bugs and they want you to be the peasant class. AI, I really do mean that. It's their golden calf. It's their god. You know, they think they control it, and it's all theirs, and they're going to use it to elevate them and suppress you. You're going to watch everything you say, everything you do, everything you type on every form of platform, electronic interwebs. Oh, I heard you said this back in here. We're going to take 10 social credit scores off of your, 
you know, your social credit uh, score, uh, uh, universal uh, credit card. So, you, you know, you can't buy food next week, you know. If you, like, uh, and there is a country, I'll let you figure out which country that is. There's a country now where this is 100% going on. No ifs, ands, or buts. It's 100%, 1,000% going on. If you think that's not coming here, you really, oh, we got freedoms here that they don't have. For now, you do. But they're, you know, they're shrinking very, very quickly. Just, uh, if you haven't seen uh, The Time Machine with uh, by H.G. Wells, like the movie version, there's many different movie versions. You should probably go see it. It's not exactly what's happening, but I mean that's what they want. You know, they're the Morlocks, and you're this uh, childlike Eloy, just the land of the stupid, just wandering around eating bugs, and they uh, serve the master Morlocks. They are their they're their food, actually. Um, don't let me spoil the movie for you. I'm sure you're not going to read the book. People just like don't even believe in reading books anymore, which is really horrible in and of itself. But the controlling class really is. They're hardcore trying to make you believe that, you know, cow flatulence is destroying the earth. They just told everybody in Indiana to turn off all their lights. Hey, you're wrecking the ozone. <laughs> They're wrecking the ozone in Indiana because you got your lights on. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, I'll turn my lights off. <laughs> it's not funny at all. This is what's going on. But don't forget that that is their golden calf. AI. Like I said, I got a link for this below. I don't actually recommend anything that I actually truly don't believe in. It is made in Japan, by the way. It's essentially rust proof. I mean, way more rust proof than the other time. It's really wonderful. I love using this sucker. So, if you're interested in getting it, I got the link below in a pinned comment. Let me know what you think. I read every comment. I love when people say, I bet you're not going to read my comment. And I read it. And it's like, okay, I didn't read your comment. <laughs> Even though, of course, I did. If you want to contact me, my information is in the description below. Any donations always warmly welcome. Have a lovely week. Don't fall for this. Don't fall for, you know, their plan. You know, don't fall for their golden calf. You know, that they tell, you know, you what to do, you know, cow flatulence. Turn your lights off, Indiana. <laughs> eat bugs. We're going to eat the steaks and fly in our private jets, but... You know, you're the peasant class. You serve us. Shut up, peasant. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Lux eh, veritas.